I am sure that you have seen this before. YouTube videos that are titled like this. Building a 1000 horsepower Toyota Supra in 10 minutes. Or building a horsepower Dacia in 15 minutes. My point is, I always wondered how they managed to build an awesome car in just 10 minutes. And since you need to be always better than your competition, I'm going to transform this stock Miata into a finished project car in just 5 seconds. Now this is a special technique I learned from an Albanian basket weaving forum, but I think it should work. Here we go. Well, I guess I got scammed. What the fuck? Yep, I bought another Miata. But why? The answer is easy. I wanted to do the big funny. Shit! Shit! He's fighting the steering wheel! But this plan may not happen. That's why this very Miata could be yours. More on that later. And yes, this is the Miata from the Weekly Dose intro. So why did it take me so many months to show this car to you? Before I tell you, you need to understand why I bought this car. You see, with the first Miata, the engine swap will take quite some time, so I needed another car to make content with. On the release day of my first ever high effort real life video, the LS400 review, you pick up the phone and press this green button. I told myself that if it does well, I will get another car just to make content with. And right after I published this video on YouTube, someone published this Miata one hour away from my city. And as you can imagine, my reaction was quite emotional. Now, enough with the boring stuff. Before I show you the car more closely, let's do some testing. Can it shoot flames? No, but it can pretend to be a Volkswagen. Can it impress my viewers? This is Adderall Andy. Andy drove over 10 hours just to meet me and help with the video. See? That's clutch. That was clutch. <laughs> <laughs> is it comfortable on the highway? Is it comfortable in the city? Can it beat the average family sedan in a drag race? Mighty's car may be faster, but mine has an ass. An ass? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean, bigger is not always better. I like them small. Can it fit a belt-fed general-purpose machine gun chambered for the 762 by 54 mm cartridge? Let's find out. Will it make your passenger laugh? Teraz kasiu. Jens, yes, it's Maria. I'm sorry, I'm not talking shit. Can it show off at car meets? Do people at car meets like it? 
Am I looking for excuses just to show more dashcam clips? Yeah, but I mean, check out this idiot. A driving school instructor is overtaking another driving school instructor, but with the student driver inside, while he's attempting to turn left. Anyways, let me show you the car more closely. Now, I don't want to waste your time. Here is what we are walking with. This is a 1996 lifted Dodge Ram truck. Just so you know, I did not modify this car from the outside at all. But there's some stuff on the inside that I did change. More on that later. Now the coolest part is the engine. Come on, don't be scared, I will show you. This, this thing is a turbo. I'm sure you know how turbos work. Basically, they suck air and put it in the engine again to make more power. This is a 1.8 liter engine from the second generation Miata. But to prevent it from blowing up, it received forged internals and a driver that is too scared to floor it. The result, the result is 630 newton meters and 360 kilometers. <laughs> the problem is the stock Miata transmission is only rated for 250 horsepower, which means that at any second this transmission can blow up. This Miata is equipped with a proper roll bar, unlike my first Miata, which is equipped with a decapitation bar. It also has a limited slip differential, which allows this car to do the big funny. And since the previous owner was a fan of the greatest YouTube channel in existence, he added an automated message every time you start the car. Now, Car Mighty's Miata is, is quite frankly the best car to have ever existed in the history of YouTube. Every time I see it, I get a huge erection. Absolutely huge. It's great. I just want to grab it by the exhaust. Not only did the first owner remove all the rust, he also repainted this car in a weird shade of red that is also being used by Porsche. It seems like the previous owner was a Porsche fan. He also added those side skirts which do nothing but collect dust. They remind me of those toilets that like, where the poop doesn't fall into the water but it gets like presented to you like on a tray. Why does this exist? Just like the combination of tires and wheels, I don't like them. I prefer them more meaty. You know, just, just like your mother. LED headlights, because without them, the distracted teenager in her mom's Cadillac SUV will crush you to death. But here's the thing that I hate the most, the LED turning lights with the correct housing. Ugly. Yeah. Maybe go lower, because I will also talk about the... About the what? The front splitter? Oh, okay. Oh shit, I didn't even notice the fucking toe strap is gone. The what? There was a toe strap before. <laughs> I can't believe I have to say this, but in the back you can see two pipes that are actually real. Not only are the exhaust pipes a bit too big for my taste, they also have some weird Serbian war criminal's name on them. Nostrils, because Formula 1 car. The engineers at Mazda designed the rear bumper to function like a parachute, to slow the car down because it was too powerful. That's why the previous owner did a procedure called the bumper cut, which means he cut out this portion of the bumper to add 50 horsepower to the aerodynamics. Just like I did with my Miata, he removed the original steering wheel with the airbag and replaced it with one that will kill you instantly, instead of prolonging your pain on the way to the hospital. Just like the engine, the seats come from the second generation Miata. My ass hurts after like two hours of driving, but you must understand that my daily driver is basically a retirement home on wheels. So I have pretty high standards for comfort. The diamond stitching is really nice, I actually like it. That's why my main Miata, I also have it. Just like previously mentioned, there is a roll bar, but there is still a soft top behind it. A viewer wrote me on Instagram and asked if you can have a hard top and a soft top at the same time. Well, the good news is, yes, yes you can. I forgot to mention, this Miata is equipped with a hard top that is color matched to the rest of the car. And Miata owners know that this is like worth half of the car. <laughs> now, here are five things I dislike about this car. The car is too low for my taste. I don't like sacrificing comfort for looks. If you put this up 3 to 4 centimeters higher, I don't think you will notice a huge difference in performance. The hard top needs better adjustment because compared to my first Miata, it rattles and squeaks a lot more. This should be an easy fix, but I'm lazy as fuck. The paint. Since I'm used to the original Miata paint, I notice more orangey tones in this color, which to others may be fine, but you know, I like red. If you use a blinker, the halo ring turns off, which makes it look broken. This not only attracts police, but also makes you look incompetent with wiring. It should be an easy fix, but again, I'm a lazy fuck. The sound where standing still is horrible. In fact, there's a lot of sounds coming from this car that I'm worried about. Maybe because this is my first car with a turbocharger. 
But for every bad thing about this car, there are a bazillion good things. Here are the things that I like about this car. People absolutely love this car. If you love attention, the cheapest way to get it is by buying a Miata with pop-up headlights. The sound. While the exhaust is not too loud, the intake sound is. Just listen to this. It is almost louder than the voices. The looks. I personally wouldn't modify my car like this, but I don't hate this one either. For my other Miata, on the other hand, I finished the exterior. You will see in the project update video next week. Or two weeks, I don't know anymore. The driving experience is better than I expected. Until now, I only ever drove stock Miatas and you could notice the body roll a lot. Also, the grip with those Michelin tires is mind-blowing. Tire width is a big factor here. On my stock Miata, I had around 190mm width, here we have 205. And on my upcoming V8 Miata, I plan to put on 225mm of black rubber. The power. Even though the clutch is slipping at higher RPMs, it still helps with overtaking and doing the big funny. The limited slip differential, LSD, should be, in my opinion, standard equipment in every rear-wheel drive car. It is a human right to do the big funny. Now, again, why did I buy this and how can you get your hands on this very car? Well, you buy it from me. What did you expect, some giveaway or something? Do I look rich to you? I will cut out the do I look rich to you part. What? Yes, yes you do. Okay, yeah, I mean, I have three cars, <laughs> three shit boxes to be exact. I bought this car to make content with it, as my old Miata will spend this year mostly sitting in a garage to get its engine swap. The original plan for this one was to build a drift Miata, but life decided to ruin most of my plans for real life videos this year, so unfortunately I don't need this car anymore. Unless this and the following project update video will do exceptionally well on YouTube. If it does end up meeting my expectations, I will keep this car. Also, I think this car is too clean to become a beater on the drift track. If you're interested in buying this car, here is what you need to know. The bad stuff. The original 5-speed transmission is rated for around 250 horsepower and 320 Nm, while well, this car makes 320 horsepower and around 400 Nm. You could swap a 6-speed transmission, which is rated for more, or you could just keep buying 5-speed transmissions since they are super cheap and are easy to install. Even though this car was repainted, some dents and scratches are visible. Despite the clutch being upgraded to a stage 2 kit from Bofi Racing, it still slips a tiny bit at max power. A tiny bit. It slips a lot. I most likely messed up the break-in period. While the previous owner did some audio upgrades, I couldn't get it to sound right. Granted, I just played around with the settings of the radio. Now, to the good stuff. The typical Miata rust is repaired. The whole car repainted and underside is restored and sealed. The seals are healthy. The guy that restored my own Miata says that this one was also done pretty good. The engine is in good condition and as said previously, it has forged internals. I have images of the whole rust repair and engine upgrade process from the previous owner. It had a huge service done around 500 kilometers ago. Here is what has been done to it. Clutch with a flywheel and pressure plate, clutch slave cylinder, rear shaft seal, regeneration of brake calipers, new discs and new pads, braided cables, a new handbrake cable, new brake fluid, a 71 degree thermostat fluid from IL Motorsport, a new gear lever, upper and lower shift boot rubber. Since the manifold cracked, it was removed, repaired and assembled again. New gaskets, manifold, turbo and downpipe, a new k and cone filter, checking and adjusting of the valve clearances, and a broken power steering hose was repaired, and of course, new fluid for the power steering. So, to summarize the important stuff, you have a clean, rusty Miata with a forged engine making 320 horsepower, a color-matched hardtop, limited slip differential and a big service that fixed all the little issues with this car, except for the gearbox problem, of course. Basically, this car is ready for the season. My price? 15,000 euros. Now go ahead, post it in your local Mazda Miata group and laugh at me. I know what I got. The price is negotiable, of course, since after the recording, the transmission started to make funny noises. I think now it's time for a new transmission, but luckily they are dirt cheap. I could give you my 5-speed transmission from my main V8 Miata, since I don't need it anymore. I would also consider trading this car for whatever you drive. It should be a real drive and fun. Come on. What do you mean? Are you suggesting something, cameraman? But I already have a Lexus. The car stands close to the airport in Kraków, Poland. If you're interested, shoot me an email here. But before you do, please only write me an email if you're truly interested. 
If you just want to talk and hang out, join my Discord server. I send like 180,000 messages there since I have no life. There I am extremely easy to get in touch with, so please, only email me if you're interested in the car. Quick summary, if this video does not meet my expectations, it's not about views by the way, this car will be for sale. If it will meet my expectations, it stays, so I get to make content with it. Who knows, maybe after all we could make a Miata giveaway sometime in the future. Did I just make a 10 minute video just to sell a car? Hello YouTube. Hopefully this isn't the last time you see me with uh, Mighty's driving skills. Worth fifteen thousand. <laughs>